make this declaration.
Come on and clap your hands, everybody. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Welcome to you, Go Girl Women's Conference 2021. Where's all my sisters at? Give God the glory because this is the weekend that we've been waiting for. Look, you have registered, you've given your money, you've prepared this weekend to be with us, and you are at the greatest women's conference that you have ever attended. You go, girl. This is about empowerment. This is about strengthening you. This is about realigning you with your purpose and with your destiny. Some great things are going to happen this weekend. And listen, my name is Pastor Rennell Johnson. I get to be the pastor of the greatest church in the world, Restoration Church. And I also get to speak to you this afternoon about what the Lord has laid on my heart concerning you. And I am so excited because you are getting ready to be revolutionized in your thinking. You are getting ready to be changed. You are getting ready to be renewed in your mind. God is going to do some great, great things. Listen, before we get started, why don't you just tag somebody in the group right now and say to them, you go, girl. Come on, put it all over the comment section. I need you to get excited because this weekend is your weekend. I'll say it again. This weekend is your weekend. So type, type in the comment section right now and say, you go, girl, because God is getting ready to blow our minds. Listen, uh, as we get ready to go into this general session, I want you to prepare now because the Lord wants to speak to your heart. The Lord wants to speak to your mind. The Lord wants to speak to your spirit. And I, I, I don't want to alarm you, uh, but I want you to know that as we're talking about going, right, the, the conference is called You Go Girl, I want to start this conference with a word that seems antithetical to the entire conference. I want to start this word with the, with the, with the, I want to start this conference rather with the word stop. 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 Just for a minute, stop what you're doing. Just for a minute, pause. Because before we can become unstoppable, we must become unbreakable. 
And if we're going to be unbreakable, there have got to be times in our spiritual walk with God, sister, that we pause and just be in the presence of God. God has provided for you a weekend for you to just get away with him. This, this may not be a physical vacation, but it's absolutely a spiritual vacation. Where you get to be in the presence of the almighty God. Where you get to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn about who God has destined you to become. And if you're going to go, you've got to stop. And if, you've got, if, if, and if God is going to take you higher, you're going to have to slow down for just a minute and prepare for what God is getting ready to do. My assignment is very clear this afternoon. My assignment is very clear. God told me to get you ready for the rest of the weekend. God, God, God told me to prepare you for what he's going to do this weekend. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. I pray, God, that in these next few moments that you would strengthen your servant to speak to every woman. That woman who's confused, that woman who's frustrated, that woman who's distracted, that woman that doesn't know who they are, God. That woman who registered because somebody told them to, but yet, God, they have no idea who you are or what you want to do in their life. I thank you, God, that even in this moment, that the word will go beyond the airstream. This word will attach itself to their hearts and to their minds. This word will rescue them from the quicksand of their own thinking, that they will learn to think like you and talk like you and a walk like you and cause them to be empowered and be the best woman and the best mother and the best wife and the best sister that you can ever call them to be I thank you that you have positioned them for purpose and for destiny and for great things God I pray that I won't miss this opportunity to speak to the weak them to, to speak to the used them to speak to the abused them God I thank you that in this moment this word that is released today will realign them and center them back into the will of God that they may become everything you have for them that they will go from being broken to being unbreakable father I thank you for these moments now in Jesus name somebody say amen listen travel with me real quickly to the book of St. Luke the gospel according to St. Luke and the 10th chapter the gospel of St. Luke and the 10th chapter I want you to look with me at verse number 38 to 41 and this is what it says it says as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught but Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing and she came to Jesus and she said Lord doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all of the work tell her to come and help me but the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. But there is only one thing. Somebody comment in the comment section and say one thing, just one thing, one thing. Worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. I, I want just for a few minutes, just put in the comment section, the woman must have both. Just put that in the comment section. The woman must have both. The woman, the woman must have both. Say it again with me. The woman must have both both we find in our text here that we have two women that we have spoken about before one of them is called Martha and one of them is called Mary now we have seen these two before because we find them also in the 11th chapter of John when their brother Lazarus is dying 
we see that Lazarus is the friend of Jesus and Lazarus is dying and Mary and Martha have a conversation with Jesus. But the one that is more vocal in John chapter 11 is the woman Martha who says to Jesus, Jesus, if, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that you are able. Martha is powerful. Martha is anointed as we as we dive into the scripture I don't want you to think for one moment that I'm here to rebuke Martha Mar Martha is powerful because Martha is the one that declares to Jesus even now hallelujah glory to God restoration church hear me sisters that you've got to have some people in your life that will speak an even now over you when it seems like everything is too late you've got to have some people who will speak over you and tell you that even though you're uh, you have an addiction even though you're broken even though you're confused even though you're terrified even though you're frustrated even now Hallelujah. Thank God for your Marthas. Thank, thank God for those sisters who hold you accountable when you feel like giving up. Thank God for those who hold you responsible when you feel like walking away. Even now, Martha is that one. Martha is that one that is anointed. Martha is that one that is used to encourage people. He, he says, even now, God, I know that even now you're able to raise him up from the dead. And in our text, we run into Mary and Martha again. We, we run into somebody who knows Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus comes to the house of Martha. Now, I want you to catch this because this is really important that Mary and Martha are preparing for Jesus to come. They, they, they book an appointment with Jesus. He's coming over for dinner. And Mary and Martha, Mary and Martha, both of them prepare the feast for Jesus to come. But when Jesus arrives, the Bible says that Martha is in the kitchen and she's getting this and she's doing that and she's doing this and she's doing that. And the Bible says that Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. You know, it was Jewish custom at that time that when you sat at the feet of anybody, you are automatically putting them in a position of influence. When you, when you sit at the feet of somebody, you are calling them your teacher and you are referring to yourself as a disciple in other words when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus she was saying I, I don't want to miss this moment I, I would you just put that in the comment section and say I, I, I don't want to miss my moment I, I don't want to miss my moment I show up to church on Sunday because I don't want to miss my moment I pray and I fast and I give God glory because I don't want to miss my moment I, I don't ever want there to be a time in which I miss my moment in the presence of the almighty God and the Bible says that Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus but somebody who was present when they were preparing is now gone Mary's at the feet of Jesus and Martha is still doing stuff now now, now please don't get upset with Martha because without Martha nothing gets done Martha is the serving one okay Martha is the one that's going to do what, they, what needs to be done Martha is that woman who is serving in ministry and serving her family and serving her job Martha is that full-time woman who has a full-time job and she's a full-time mother and she's a full-time wife and she has this going on oh oh by the way she's also a full-time teacher over the last year Martha is that woman who has hands in everything and her feet in everything and she's multitasking Martha is anointed thank God for every Martha thank God for every woman who over the last year was called to do things that they've never had to do before women are multitaskers hear me I know oh y'all y'all are bad y'all this Take, listen, I'm going to give you your props today. You are a bad woman. You, you, are, you, are, you are bad. The way you're able to do everything and pull it off so well, Martha is a representation of you. But the Bible says that even while Martha is serving, she becomes frustrated. She becomes frustrated because the one who started with her, Mary, is not even serving 
I, I don't even think, I, I don't even think that Martha knew that Mary was at the feet of Jesus. All Martha knew is that she's not here. You see, sometimes we get frustrated at people because they're not where we think they should be. But just because they're not where we think they should be does not mean that they're in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't mean they're in the wrong place. And the Bible said that Martha got frustrated because Mary was not there. You see, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind. Listen, listen. Martha thought she had a Mary problem, but Martha had a Martha problem. <laughs> Martha did not have a Mary problem because Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Martha had a Martha problem. And you see, when you don't recognize that you are the problem, when you don't recognize that you have spent so much time away from the presence of God and being in the presence of God, you will start blaming everyone else for your absence from the feet of Jesus. Martha began to blame Mary. She said, Jesus, aren't you going to tell Mary to come and serve with me? Aren't you going to tell me, don't you see? In fact, the actual word says, don't you care? There are so many of us who are so ingrained in our schedules and in our children's schedules and in our job schedules and in our ministry schedules. It gets to a point where you say, does anybody care that I'm doing all of this? Does anybody care that I'm tired and I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed out and I'm weary? Does anybody care that I have so much going on? Do you care? And when you don't feel like anybody cares, we start getting numb. That's when we go from serving to just doing it just because. I used to love singing on the praise team, but now I just sing just because. I, I used to love ushering, but now I just point people to their seat because this is what I'm expected to do. But I don't really know if anybody cares. I'm Martha standing in the kitchen preparing stuff. And watch this. She was preparing for somebody that was already there. He shot. Hear me, sisters. Hear me, sisters. Some of the frustration you're going through is because you are so distracted by life that you don't recognize that you are being distracted from him. Distractions by life is causing you to be distracted from Jesus. The Bible says that Mary was not just away from Martha. That was Martha's complaint. But she forgot that Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Sis, I rose up here to start this conference to encourage you to get back to the feet of Jesus. I know you got a full-time job. I, I know you got children you got to take care of. I know that you are important and necessary to your ministry. I know that you have a busy schedule. But somewhere in the middle, we have lost our ability to be at the feet of the one we say we serve. You can be so busy doing the work of the Lord. That you have forgotten the Lord of the work. Mary was at the feet receiving from Jesus. Mary, Mar Mary really shows us really the three P's of her existence. Really, I, I, And I want you to catch this because Mary, the Bible says that Mary had chosen the better part. Right. I, I, I'll go over that in a minute. But I want to tell you about these three P's real quickly, because I think it's really important if the woman is going to be unbreakable and if the woman is going to be unstoppable, you've got to catch these three P's about Mary. First of all, Mary was in the right place. Uh-huh. There is a place, the hymn writer said it. I know some of you don't know hymns, but there's a hymn that says there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God there is a place 
there is a place. Now there is a physical place, the church. Uh huh. There's a place, there's an altar, there's a place for us to come. 5840 Kirby Road and whatever churches the other sisters may belong to, there is a place that we can go and hear God. But that's not the only place. You've got to create a place in your home. <laughs> you got to create a place in your car, a place at your job, a place wherever you go. There is a place at Restoration Church. Hear me today. Sisters from wherever church you come from all over the world, hear me today. They might take your time, but they can never take your place. The place is wherever Jesus is. Martha and Mary were both preparing for Jesus, but only one recognized that he's here now. Can I tell you something, sisters? Jesus is here right now. I don't know if you're watching me from the car, or you're watching me from your home, or you're watching me from your job. Wherever you're watching me, I want you to know that there is an innumerable company and host of angels that are surrounding you right now. Jesus is right where you are. Come on, put it in the comment section. Say, Jesus is here. He's not just at 5840. He's wherever you are. Jesus is here. The question becomes, sis, what are you going to do with the fact that Jesus is here? That brings me to my second P. She was in the right place. But number two, she took the right posture. You see, it's good, to be, it, it, it's good to be in the right place. But Martha was in the same place. But both of them, Mary and Martha, were in the same place. But only one of them had the right posture. This is why Restoration Church and, and all about, I keep saying Restoration Church by habit. But wherever you come from, hear me sisters. This, this, this is why, this is why, this is why. When you are in the right place, make sure you have the right posture. Don't ever come to church and not lift your hands. Because just because you're in the place doesn't mean that he'll understand or hear you or connect with you. What really puts you in a place with God is not only when you're in the right place, but you have the right posture. The Bible says that not only was she in the right place, but she took the right posture. She sat at the feet of Jesus. Sitting at his feet is not the same as being under his feet. Under his feet means that you're defeated. When you stand on somebody, that means you're defeated. She didn't sit under his feet. She sat at his feet, which is a place of humility. It's a place of discipleship. It's a place of obedience. It's a place that says, you are greater than I. Whatever you say, I want it to fall on me. Remember the Gentile woman? She said, even the, 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 the crumbs that fall from the master's table, I just want the crumbs. And if I, if I sit at his feet... Even if I don't deserve what he says. Hey, just give me the crumbs. Just, I want to sit at his feet and receive whatever comes down. And so she had the right place. She had the right posture. But because she was right at his feet, it also means that she made Jesus her priority. Restoration Church and all my sisters across the world, hear me. We're talking about you go, girl, this weekend. You can't go if Jesus is not a priority. You, 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 can't, you can't go into your destiny and into your purpose if Jesus is not your priority. Hear me, woman of God. Hear me, sis. Hear me, mom. Hear me, daughter. Hear me, cousin, whoever you are. Hear me. In this season, woman, you need both. Both what, pastor? You need the Martha and you need the Mary on the inside of you. The Bible said Mary had chosen that better part. Why? Because Mary had served too. Mary had did everything that Martha did. But when Jesus arrived, 
she knew enough to stop for a minute and get into his presence. My sisters, hear me today. I want to encourage you. Don't miss your moments this weekend. Don't, don't, don't miss anything. When service, comes to, when service happens tonight, come half an hour early if you can. Whatever time service starts, when you find out what time it is, come half an hour early and just sit at the altar. Be in the place. Take the right posture and make him a priority. When worship begins tonight, be in the place. Take the right posture and make him a priority. When Pastor Rollins comes tonight and preaches the word of God, man, the word is going to change your life, but it won't change you if you're not in the place. Have the right posture and make him a priority. You need both. You need to be Martha. Yeah, yeah. You need to serve. Absolutely, you need to serve. I'm not telling you that Mary is the do-nothing woman. That's not who she is. There's no such thing as a do-nothing woman. The unstoppable woman, the you-go-girl woman is not a do-nothing woman. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what the Bible is saying. That's not what Jesus said about Mary. Mary was a working woman. But as soon as Jesus came, she was in the right place, took the right posture, and made him a priority. Bible says about Jesus that he looked to Martha he said Martha he said you are cumbered with a lot of things that word cumbered that King James word cumbered it means that you are distracted listen to me Restoration Church and all of my sisters you can be distracted doing good things you see the enemy is so cunning and deceiving that we think the only thing that we can be distracted by are evil things. But the devil can use your good against you. This is why Paul says to the Galatian brethren, he says, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You can get tired of doing good and the devil can use your good against you. He said, you are distracted. I know you're doing good for me and you're trying to serve me. But while you're serving me, you're missing me. It's possible that you could serve him and miss him at the same time. The solution is not to not serve him. Oh, you've got to serve him, but make sure you don't miss him. Do a Mary. Serve, and then when you have a moment, don't miss it. The key to not missing him is not, not serving. The key to not missing him is serving well so you can be at the feet of Jesus. This weekend, God wants to make you living proof. This, this weekend, God is going to make you make a testimony out of you. He shall. Oh, yeah. This, this weekend, God is going to blow your mind. This weekend, he's going to feed you with living water that you will never thirst again. Just like the woman at the well. And the Bible says she went out and spread abroad the noise and she became living proof. But you can't be living proof if you're not living. You've got to be able to live for him who died for you. So Restoration Church and all my sisters, this is going to be a phenomenal weekend. Get here early tonight. Get here early tonight. Come out on Friday night and sit in the sanctuary and hear the IHOP presentation in her own perspective and listen to the women feed you with testimonies. The Bible said we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. There's some things that you will not overcome until you sit at the feet and hear those testimonies. They're testimonies of how God delivered them. Come out on Saturday for everything that's going on, the, the daytime sessions, the noonday sessions, and for, the, for the, uh, the dip and paint in the afternoon. Come on out. Come, 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 come. Why? Because all of it is putting you in the place, getting you to that right posture. Well, Pastor, how does a dip and paint put me in the posture? Is that not fellowship? Is that not sisters bonding together? 
as Jesus commanded us to do, absolutely is the right posture. Absolutely is making Christ a priority. And then on Sunday, let's finish big. Let's finish big. Let's come and let's worship God. As our praise team ministers, lift your hands and run if you have to and lay out on the floor if you have to. Don't let nobody tell you how to worship this weekend. I mean, go off. You go, girl. This is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. Go hard this weekend. Us brothers, we got you covered. Go hard this weekend. Don't worry about nothing. Go hard this weekend. Come in the church and go hard. Go off this weekend. So you can be everything that Christ has made you to be. You go, girl. You're bad. You're awesome. You are enough. You're wonderful. You've overcome abuse. You've overcome rape. You've overcome depression. You've overcome, overcome anxiety. You've overcome low self-esteem. You've overcome battles with addiction. You've overcome cancer. You've overcome HIV. You've overcome COVID. You've overcome everything against you. You go, girl. And if nothing has stopped you yet, good God, I'll see you on Saturday night. If nothing has stopped you yet, and I got news for the devil. Every sister under the sound of my voice is unbreakable and unstoppable. But first, get back to the feet of Jesus. Christ be with you.